So my name is Matthew LeBlanc. I'm a um, PhD uh, postdoctoral research fellow at the University of North Carolina. Um, I'm presenting some work um, at the IMS conference today, looking at patterns of attrition um, between first line multiple myeloma therapy and second line multiple myeloma therapy. So basically looking at the patients that um, get first line therapy, but don't go on to receive a subsequent second line therapy. So we did this study using a um, SEER Medicare database, which um, is a somewhat national cancer registry um, linked with Medicare claims data. So it's primarily looking at patients with multiple myeloma that are over the age of 65. Our cohort included um, 10,014 multiple myeloma patients. And we found that 40% of patients did not go on to receive a second line of multiple myeloma therapy um, within a year um, after their first line uh, multiple myeloma therapy ended. And among those patients that didn't receive a second line therapy, 50% of them had passed away within those 12 months after the first line of their therapy ended. We also looked at how these patterns um, have been changing over time. So our data set looked at patients that were diagnosed from 2007 to 2017. And among this older cohort of patients, we found that the number of patients, the percentage of patients that did not go on to receive second line therapy didn't change um, from 2007 to 2017. And we also found that the proportion of patients that ended up passing away within 12 months after the end of their first line therapy also didn't change over time. We think that this is a, you know, an important finding that deserves to be looked into further. Um, over over the, uh, the 10 years um, of data that we had, the you know, treatments of myeloma have been changing, um, but it seems like these patterns in attrition to second line haven't been um, changing as much as one might expect. This might be due to the fact that it's, it's, it's an older cohort of patients um, that have a lot of um, other um, illnesses and comorbidities to deal with um, that so could certainly um, affect their fitness for a second line of therapy and also um, their, their chances of, of passing away. We didn't uh, necessarily stratify by age, but we did control for age when we did our analysis, especially looking at the proportion of patients not receiving second line therapy over time. So we accounted for age and um, some other factors as well um, when we, we did some of those analyses. So like, as I alluded to, we, we did control for age and we, we found that it didn't really, it didn't um, sort of change the results in a meaningful way. So the, the proportion um, of patients that did not get second line therapy and even the proportion of patients that passed away within a year didn't significantly change even when adjusted for age comorbidities, treating facility, um, and there were a few other factors as well that we, we adjusted for. But it's an important question. You know, age is, is definitely something that um, is, a, is a big consideration when making treatment decisions. But we think this is kind of an interesting and surprising results. And we hope that um, this will lead to future work that helps us to better understand why patients might not be getting the second line of therapy and one day hopefully improving and increasing the proportion of patients that end up getting a second line of therapy so that we can um, help extend their life and help extend a period where they uh, have lower disease burden.